Chapter Seven: A Prisoner of the Revolution. Charles Darnay's journey through France was a difficult and dangerous one. He was stopped at every town, and his papers were inspected. It soon became known that he was an aristocrat who was journeying to Paris to save the life of an old servant of the family, and he was treated roughly by the new revolutionary officials. When he arrived in Paris, he was immediately arrested and thrown into prison. A few days later, while Mr. Lorry was sitting in his office in Paris, there was suddenly a noise outside his office. Two people burst into the room. Lucy, he cried in astonishment, and you, Doctor Manette, what are you doing here in Paris? It's Charles. Lucy explained hurriedly, "He's here in Paris, in prison." Then she explained why Darnay had come to France and how he had been arrested. "It's all in the letter he left for me before he came here," she explained. "We must save him," she cried desperately. Doctor Manette spoke now. His voice was strong and firm. "I have great influence here," he said calmly. Everyone knows that I've been a prisoner in the Bastille. They'll listen to me, and I hope they'll let Charles go. Doctor Manette left immediately for the prison where Charles was being held. He found the situation there extremely dangerous and chaotic. A lot of prisoners had been murdered by the crowd, and a revolutionary tribunal had been set up by the authorities for trying those who had survived. This was the time when the guillotine was introduced as the preferred form of execution. Hundreds of people were executed, and the dreaded tumbrils carrying aristocrats to their death could be heard on the Paris streets every day. It was a time of fear and terror. In the days and weeks that followed, Doctor Manette worked hard to save his son-in-law. He went before the tribunal and explained who he was. And how he had been held in the Bastille for eighteen years without trial. Once the tribunal knew his history, he was regarded as a friend of the new authorities. They treated him with great respect, but little was done to free Lucy's husband, who was always angrily referred to as Evremond. Months went by, and Doctor Manette went to the tribunal every day to plead his case. Finally, the doctor returned to Mr. Lorry's house one night in a mood of great excitement. I think I've succeeded," he told Lucy. "Charles is going to be moved to another prison tomorrow, and then his trial will take place before the tribunal." He looked tenderly at her. "Don't be frightened, my dear. They'll free him. I'm sure of it." Outside in the street, they could hear the sound of wheels. They both listened, knowing what the noise meant: more tumbrils carrying people to the guillotine. I must speak to Mr. Lorry, the doctor said quickly. Mr. Lorry had been sitting in his office with a visitor from England when he heard the voices of Doctor Manette and Lucy. His visitor was Sidney Carton. The lawyer did not want to be seen by the doctor or his daughter because he wanted to keep his presence in Paris a secret for a while. He signalled to the banker to go out to the doctor and Lucy. Inspect. The word inspect is a verb. It means to look at something carefully. To inspect is to look at something carefully in order to learn more about it, to find out problems. If we have a school and there is a problem, the government can send someone there to find out, to inspect, arrest. Arrest means to use the power of the law to take and keep. Someone such as a, cr a criminal. In the picture, the police, the policeman is arresting a criminal.
aristocracy. Aristocracy. The word aristocracy means the highest social class in some countries. The people who have special titles, such as the Duke and Duchess, the King and the Queen, the Prince and the Princess, who typically own land and who traditionally have more money and power than the other people in the society. Aristocracy, it means the king, the queen, and their family, and all the relatives. Astonishment. Astoni astos astonishment means surprise. A feeling of being very surprised. For example, the woman is astonished. When you, uh, the adjective is astonished, you add ed, astonished. Aston, uh, astonishment is a noun. Chaotic. Chaotic means in a state of complete confusion or disorder. When there is no order, the situation is chaotic. In the picture, the people want to fight. The situation is chaotic. Execute. Execute means to kill someone, especially as punishment for a crime. Usually, it is the government or the courts of law that will decide whether someone has to die. In that case, we say you have been executed. There are many methods of your killing. They can hang you, they can use an injection, they can use an electric chair. There are very many methods of executing people. Killing people using the law. Suddenly, suddenly means very quickly in usually an unexpected way in a sudden way. The word suddenly is used many times in stories from nowhere. For example, I am here. If a lion entered the class where I am, I don't expect the lion. So I say, suddenly the lion entered. Suddenly is an adverb, means very quickly, unexpected. Tribunal. Tribunal means a kind of court that has authority in a special area. A tribunal is a court of law, but the court of law can be taken to a village, to a town, to a specific place to try certain people or for certain purposes. Guillotine. Guillotine. Guillotine means a machine with a heavy blade that was used in the past uh, to cut, to chop the heads of people who had been sentenced to death. In the picture, that machine, as you can see, they put your head, something like a knife or a blade comes and cuts off your head. During the French Revolution, guillotines were used widely. A guillotine is a machine which was used to kill people, to execute people, to cut off people's heads. Now we begin the story again. Chapter seven, a prisoner of the revolution. Who is that prison? What happened to him? Let us read and enjoy the story. Charles Danny's journey through France was a difficult and dangerous one. In chapter six, we, we saw that Charles Danny received a letter from a servant, a servant called Gabel. Gabel had been arrested. He told Charles Danny to travel to France and save him. 
Like we saw in chapter six, the French Revolution had begun, but Charles Danny decided to come to France and save the servant. His journey through France was a difficult and dangerous one. He was stopped at every town and his papers were inspected. Inspected means they looked at his papers carefully. Everyone, what are papers? Papers, travel documents, or the passport. When you are traveling in any other country, you need papers to travel. Charles Danny had papers, so they looked at them carefully. They inspected them. It soon became known that he was an aristocrat who was journeying to Paris to save Gabel. The authorities in France soon discovered that Charles Danny was an aristocrat. We know Charles Danny is a brother. Is a brother is part of the aristocrat. Aristocrats are the rulers, the king, the, uh, the queen, the family, the leaders who was part of them. Who was journeying to Paris to save the life of an old servant of the family. And he was treated roughly by the new revolutionary officials. Once they know that he was an aristocrat, they treated him badly. Roughly means badly. Remember, the French Revolution was a revolution of the poor people. The poor people became rich. They attacked the leaders and killed them. They killed the king, the queen, the children, the family. Anybody who was rich before was killed. The new leaders of the revolution, they targeted the church, the rich, and the aristocrats. Charles Danny, we know his name was not Charles Danny. He had changed his name because he did not like what his family were doing. When he arrived in Paris, he was immediately arrested and thrown into prison. A few days later, while Mr. Lorry was sitting in his office in Paris, there was suddenly a nose outside his office. Suddenly, unexpected. Now we go to the part of Mr. Lorry. We have been looking at Charles Danny. The first part of chapter seven is about Charles Danny. Charles Danny came to Paris. Why? To save Gabriel, the old servant. The officials looked at his papers, they inspected and they found out that he was an aristocrat. They treated him very, very badly. They arrested him and took him into prison. That is the first part. The, first, the second part, the second part of chapter seven includes, begins with Mr. Lorry. A few days later, while Mr. Lorry was sitting in his office in Paris, there was suddenly a noise outside. Who is Mr. Lorry? Mr. Lorry was the gentleman who worked at Telson's bank. Remember, they had many customers in Paris who wanted to, uh, the bank to help them keep their valuables. Mr. Lorry traveled to Paris and he was in his office. Suddenly there was a noise. Two people burst into the room. They, to pass means they came forcefully into the room. Lucy, he cried in astonishment, in surprise. Mr. Lorry was surprised to see Lucy in Paris because he left them in London. And you, Dr. Manet, what are you doing here in Paris? It's Charles. 
Lucy explained hurriedly. Hurriedly means quickly. He's here in Paris, in prison. Then she explained why Daddy had come to France and how he had been arrested. Who explained? Lucy. Lucy explained to Mr. Lorry how Charles Daddy, her husband, had come to Paris. It's all in the letter he left for me before he came here. Before he came, he wrote a letter to Lucy telling him everything, how he had traveled to help an old servant, she explained. We must save him, she cried desperately. We must save who? Charles Danny. Dr. Manet spoke now. So the part has been between Mr. Lorry and Lucy Manet. Dr. Manet spoke now. His voice was strong and firm. I have a great influence here, he said calmly. Calmly, relaxed, no emotion. Everyone knows that I have been a prisoner in the Bastille. Remember, the Bastille was the infamous prison where before the revolution, they put people who did not, uh, who, were, who were imprisoned without trial. The new revolutionary authorities first attacked, remember, the fight and the crowd, they attacked the Bastille and released everyone there. But remember, Mr. Uh, Dr. Manet had left the prison long time ago, but he had spent a lot of time in the Bastille. They will listen to me, and I hope they will let Charles go. Dr. Manet left immediately for the prison where Charles was being held. He found the situation there extremely dangerous and chaotic. The situation in the prison was very bad. Extremely means very, very, very dangerous and chaotic. There was no order. Why? A lot of prisoners had been murdered by the crowd. Many of the prisoners were killed. The crowd were just going, revenging, killing everyone, and had been a revolutionary tribunal. A tribunal is a court, had been set up by the authorities. Authorities mean the people in leadership for trying those who had survived. Many of the prisoners were killed. But those who survived, to survive means those who were not killed, were taken to a court, to a tribunal. The time when the guillotine was introduced as the preferred form of execution. Execution means killing, but killing which is allowed by government or by authorities. Hundreds of people were executed. Hundreds means very, very many people were executed, were killed. And the dreaded tambourils, dreaded means fear. If you fear something, that to fear means to dread. If you are feared, you are dreaded. Tambourils, tambourils were the courage, the horses which carried the people and the dreaded tambourils carrying aristocrats to their death could be heard on the Paris streets every day. Tambourils were like carriages, coaches, where people sat, especially the aristocrats. I told you that the, the poor people attacked the leaders, the aristocrats, and they killed many of them. They used to take them, that time there were no cars, they were using tambourils. Tambourils, today we can call them buses or lorries carrying people to go to be killed. 
it was a time of fear and terror. In the real French Revolution, that one is called, was called the reign of uh, the reign of terror. The people who had succeeded, the new leaders, they carried out revenge, killing anybody they never liked. In the days and weeks that followed, Dr. Manet worked hard to save his son-in-law. Who is his son-in-law? Charles Danny. Son-in-law because Charles Danny married his daughter. He went before the tribunal and explained who he was and how he had been held in the Bastille. The tribunal, the court was trying Charles Danny. He went there and told them that he had been in the Bastille for 18 years without trial. Once the tribunal knew his history, he was regarded. He was taken as a friend of the new authorities because he suffered. Remember, they released all the people who were in the Bastille. So all the prisoners in the Bastille were their friend. They treated him with great respect. But little was done to free Lucy's husband, who was always angry referred to as Evermond. Remember, the Marquis of Evermond, their family was the Evermond family. His name is not Charles Danny. He's supposed to be called Evermond because it is the family name, but he never wanted to be associated with that name. Months went by and Dr. Manet went to the tribunal every day to plead his case. Finally, the doctor returned to Mr. Laurie's house one night in a mood of great excitement. One day, Dr. Manet went to Mr. Laurie's house when he was excited, very happy, extremely happy. I think I have succeeded, he told Lucy. Charles is going to be moved to another prison tomorrow. And then his trial will take place before the tribunal. He looked tenderly at her with a lot of love. Don't be frightened, my dear. They'll free him. I'm sure of it. Dr. Manet tried to tell, to comfort Lucy. Outside the street, they could hear the sound of the wheels, the tumbrils. They both listened, knowing that the noise meant more tumbrils carrying people to the guillotine. Whenever they heard the sound of the tumbrils, they knew that they were carrying people to the guillotine to cut off their heads. I must speak to Mr. Lorry, the doctor said quickly. Mr. Lorry had been sitting in his office with a visitor from England when he heard the voices of Dr. Mane and Lucy. Mr. Lorry had a visitor. His visitor was Sidney Cotton. I hope you remember Sidney Cotton. We first met Sidney Cotton as a junior lawyer during our first trial at the beginning of the book in London. Again, the trial was for Charles Danny. Charles Danny is always in court. Sidney Cotton is the man who looked exactly like. When you looked at him and Charles Danny, you would think that they are the same. Remember in chapter one, that is how Charles Danny survived. They say maybe it was not, uh, maybe it was Sidney Cotton. The lawyer did not want to be seen by the doctor or his daughter because he wanted to keep his presence 
in Paris as secret for a while. Sinicaton came to Paris, but he wanted it to be a secret. He was talking to Mr. Lorry, but he decided to hide, to hide. He signaled to the banker to go out to the doctor and Lucy. That is the end of chapter seven.